I was 17. I was 17 dealing with something that most people will never have to deal with. And my mind was not mature enough to process or handle that. It seems like all the deep conversations I have are always outside. Have you noticed that? Or just not in the, the game room where they usually are? There's some loud crows out here. Obviously I'm going to talk about something heavy today and that is my um, post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD um, for short and how that started and I'll talk about how I've been doing with it and uh, this is a special occasion um, because I, uh, this is my birthday, um, it's August 24th, and, uh, I am 33 years old today, so I've leveled up to 33, you know, uh, I just feel like the same person that I've always felt like, um, just with more experience and grayer hair in my beard, so, I'm kind of stalling right now because I've talked about this with personal friends and I've never put it out there for everyone to see so um, uh, let's just talk about this so when I was 17 years old I was working a job at a, a Dairy Queen and I uh, finished my shift that night about 10 15 a little earlier than um, usual and I was driving home and I'm driving down this road that um, is not very well lit. There's a little bit of a dip and a bend in the road and stuff like that. There's not a lot of lighting out there. Um, there's a lot of bars there and um, my memory is kind of messed up from that night. I don't remember all the details. It's weird. I can, I can remember what song's playing. Uh, it was Untitled by Finch. And uh, the next thing I just know, I see a face and all of a sudden there's a, a loud impact and the glass of the windshield is shattering and I'm slamming on the brakes and I don't remember anything before that, really, just the song. I remember getting out of the, the vehicle and that there was someone laying in the road. I remember running to, uh, it was an O'Reilly's Auto Parts that was right there, running over there just hoping anyone was there and I'm just slamming against the door and there's no one there and I knew there was no one there. So I run back to the road, I can see that somebody is parked um, parallel to me and they are stopped and, and I run over and I scream for them to call 911 and instead they drove away. I'm sitting on the ground next to this um, older man. Uh, I say older, he was in his like mid to late 40s. I think he was 47. Wearing dark clothing, he is gasping for air. I'm telling him that he's gonna be okay, that, that we're gonna get him help, don't try to move. Um, Luckily, another car pulls up kind of behind us and they get out and they call 911 and they're rushing over and everything from that point is kind of a blur. I remember sitting on the, on the curb of the road. I remember, I remember people starting to, to show up. I vaguely remember some police and I remember the ambulance just vaguely. I remember someone telling me I was bleeding, but I didn't, I didn't feel hurt, um, but apparently I was bleeding from the ear a little bit. My, my best friend at the time, Drew, his dad was the fire chief, and his dad heard the description of the vehicle, um, grabbed Drew, and they got there pretty quickly, um, but the police would not let Drew speak with me, even though he did get out enough to, to run over and put his hand on my shoulder and, and ask if I was okay before the police pulled him back. Drew's dad was able to stay for, with me for a bit and, and my parents were able to get there and see me. They let them through, thankfully. Yeah, I was just surrounded by love. I guess, that night. They took me to the police station, I gave a statement, and they tried to um, 
on a sheet of paper helped me draw out what happened. But it was tough to do. They had no indication that I was drinking or, or doing drugs or anything because I wasn't. I literally had just gotten off work. The, the car that stopped behind me had been keeping pace with me, so I was going uh, the speed limit roughly, um, and they could vouch for that. They didn't see the person either until it happened. So we go through recounting everything at the police station. They let me go and I go home and not too long after we get home uh, we get the call from Drew's dad and uh, the guy didn't make it. And um, I didn't know what to think. I, I didn't know what to think at all. I felt devastated. Um, yeah, of course, I felt like it was my fault. Yeah, and I, I don't. Weeks later, the autopsy investigations, everything, were done, and it was ruled to be um, not my fault. There was no charges. Um, the guy's alcohol, um, blood alcohol level was astronomical, and they just assumed that he didn't even know what was going on. He just stumbled across the street, you know, and just happened to be at this crappy part of the road with no lighting, and I just didn't see it. Regardless of whether it was my fault or not, I felt like it, and, and I felt Horrible. I can't. I can't even describe the things that were going through my head, the things I was feeling, and I took it out on myself a lot. I tried to bury things really deep and not let other people see it. My my poor parents tried so hard, but the more and more they they pried and asked questions, the more I pushed them away. Um, a lot of my friends just didn't know how to handle it, and they tried, especially with humor. Um, I went through some pretty bad depression. I saw some therapists and it just wasn't helping. The therapists I saw weren't interested in me, you know, they were interested in the money and getting a paycheck. Went on and off lots of medications. Ultimately, I felt there was nothing that could be done. This was my new normal. I was pretty self-destructive, um, mentally and physically. Um, I did hurt myself intentionally quite a bit. It was just one of those things where I don't even know how to describe it. I, I didn't do something thinking, hey, I need to I need to feel something. It was just I did it and didn't question it and didn't think about it. I just did it. Driving was really hard for me for a long time. I mean I still did it, I had to, but God it was hard. And and I would get triggered so easily. I used to have flashbacks. The worst I ever had was one night when I was drunk and I, my emotions were already running high because of, of a girl and a friend of mine and I felt betrayed and, and I got so drunk and was lost all control of myself and that was one of the most embarrassing nights of my entire life. In fact, it is the most embarrassing night of my entire life. Things weren't easy for a long time, but I can say 16 years later, I'm in a good place. I'm in a really good place with it. And I'm, I'm not really blaming myself, and, and I consider a lot of good things have surprisingly come out of it. I've been able to help other people going through rough times. When I'm put in situations like an accident or, or some kind of emergency, now I'm able to keep my cool more. When something bad happens to me, it doesn't feel nearly as bad or as scary in comparison to what I went through that night. And honestly, who knows what that guy was going through. Maybe he was gonna end up drinking himself to death. Maybe there was some other problem that he had. Maybe it was part of the plan for his life to end with me so that people could place the blame on me and not themselves if he had reached out for help before. Maybe that makes things for his family easier. I don't know but I've gotten to a place where I am willing to accept that burden if that is the case. 
I know that sounds weird, I know it doesn't sound quite right, but it's something that helps me get through it, you know? It helps me deal. I am in a good place now. And, and it's easier for me to drive, and I don't have flashbacks anymore, and I rarely, rarely have nightmares about it like I used to. I couldn't sleep for so long, for years. The reason I'm talking about this today on my birthday, turning 33, I decided I am gonna go get my first tattoo. And that tattoo is going to be the date of that accident as a symbol of what I've been through and where I've gone. It's a reminder that I can overcome the worst that life has to offer. All right, so all that said, um, just wanna tell you I'm going to benchmark tattoo and I will show you guys the results and I'm looking forward to it. All right, I'm back home now. The tattoo is done and it was a great experience. My, my tattoo artist's name was Mike Rosendahl and this was at Benchmark Tattoo. He was super professional, he was super nice. We had a great conversation while he was doing the tattoo and I was just impressed with how clean and how sterile everything was because I've been in some pretty dingy looking tattoo places before, which is weird since I haven't had a tattoo before this, but I just happened to find myself in a few from time to time for no particular reason, I guess. But it was awesome. I can't recommend Benchmark Tattoo or Mike enough. Please follow him on Instagram at Mike Rosendahl Tattoos. Check out his work. And if you happen to live in the area around Duluth, like definitely head there if you want a tattoo because I can't recommend him enough. And I'm sure the rest of the staff is just as great, but I had a great time with him. There we are. Yep. The skin's a little dry, so I gotta put some uh, coconut oil on it, but it's healing really well, and I'm just super excited and definitely plan to go back for more. Anyway, thank you guys so much for clicking on this video and, and watching it. This was a video that was so personal and so dear to my heart that anyone would take the time to listen to my story and, and the struggle that I've been through and to be a part of my celebration of recovering from this thing that happened almost 16 years ago. And I just wanna take the time now that if you suffer from depression or anxiety or PTSD, any other things like I do, like I, I would love to talk with you. Even if it's private, you can email me, rerolling.info at gmail.com, so we don't have to do it in the comments. But I would love to just hear your story and, and, and just listen. I mean, I feel pulled in a direction to meet and talk with people that have been going through similar things. And, and so I would definitely love to do it. I would cherish that opportunity. But like I said, thanks again for watching, for listening. Please leave a like, a comment. Please subscribe because it will be super helpful. And I'll see you later.